My name's Ezra Furman. You're watching Ambi. <sighs> hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I'd like to welcome you to our interview with Ezra Furman. How are you? I'm really good. I'm really good. Ready? You're starting a tour. Could it could give you some? It's kind of energizing thing to do. Well, of course, you're touring in support of your latest record release, Perpetual Motion People. So are you enjoying your time on the road so far? How's that been treating you? You know, it gets, it gets hard when, when far into the tour. We had a long tour. I got real tired. We took a beautiful break. And now, like, we're replenished. We're starting out again. Well, I know that you're soon going to actually be off to England. I know that you're going to Germany and Spain. Are you looking forward to going over there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're really nice to us in other countries. Um, you know, in North America, they, they've seen enough North Americans. <laughs> Is there anything on your bucket list or to-do list for when you're over there? Anything you kind of want to see or adventure? You know, that would have been a great thing to have thought about already and planned <laughs> out. But there's no time. Very there's true. just there's shows to play, there's there's people to, you know, to satisfy and, and reach and then there's no time because you gotta get up early and drive to Nuremberg. You know? Yeah. Well I mean you just mentioned how there is no time. I mean normally you probably Wake up, you drive, you load in, you sound check, you play, and then you're kind of off to the next place. But when you do get some downtime, when you're on the road, what do you look for in a city? Do you kind of go to museums? Are you a vinyl shopper? Do you thrift shop? I, you know, all my clothes are falling apart, so I do gotta go. I gotta get like a new, I gotta get a belt. Um, so thrift shops would be good to find. It's hard to find them. You know, usually the biggest thing is find a laundromat. Just a laundromat. That's our greatest, our fondest dream, us weary <laughs> travelers. A cheap laundromat. I want to go back to the record for a second. I just have to mention how much I love your lyrics. They're just amazing. I love how you look at life as very ordinary, but you have this really cheeky and blunt spin on your lyrics. It's fantastic. So I was curious as to who you look to uh, just for as an influence when it comes to your lyrics. Oh, the list is large. You know, we have time. <laughs> I'm a student of songwriting. You know, I'm doing. I I research it. It's like, I feel like it's my number one job. And if I could only be good at one part of this, it would be writing good songs. Um, so I I listen to lots of I don't uh, the Fiona Apple, <laughs> um, and Robert Johnson, and Leonard Cohen, and <laughs> lots more. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm just, I'm looking for um, models of reality. What makes, what makes a, a person come across as um, being true and, and sort of glowingly themselves in songs. And, you know, that's a thing that takes a lot of work to achieve. So I'm researching it, trying to get better and better at it. And do you have a personal favorite lyric that you've written, whether from the solo material or from one of the three records you did with the Harpoons? A personal f Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to be a fan of my own music right now? At the now. moment, yes, we do. That's a very difficult thing to do. Um, I, I do have some, some things I enjoy saying to crowds of people. Uh, and I'm trying to think about it for a second. <laughs> you can come back to it if you it's like. It's a long pause. You can, it's I don't right. know if you, if you, I don't know if you edit these things, but if not, I'm sorry. Don't be. <laughs> It's, you know, I, I don't listen to my own music too much, except when I need to learn it again if I forgot it, <laughs> which happens a lot. Uh, I like that song, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. That was sort of like a, a new 
a new place for me as a lyricist. That, that it kind of has some kind of significance. I felt like I came to a new place. So I started that first solo record off with it. Lines about shooting marbles in the maintenance closet, and uh, I think I think that's some that's some decent writing. If I had to choose something, but you put me on the spot. Woo! <laughs> Well, I just wanted to bring up the video that you actually put out for Lousy Connection, where you and the boyfriends are just playing with a bunch of eggs, oh, and yeah. by the end of it, you end up getting covered in eggshells and yolk, and it looks very messy. How was it actually creating that? Oh, that was that was a hell of a good time. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, we kind of had a bunch of... We had to make a video. There were a bunch of ideas going around. Some director wanted to think of something and complex concepts. And I just got frustrated at some point. I was like, you know what? Just make it eggs. Why don't we just, what is better than like throwing eggs, breaking eggs? Um, that's something to, that's something to look at. And they just, it, I was pleased to see that they just went with it. Um, it's fun. It's fun to throw eggs at your bandmates or smash eggs on your face. It's cathartic to break shells. Did any of it hurt when it was kind of getting thrown at you? Some of those throws were hard by the end of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Jorgen had some bruises from the... <laughs> <laughs> from eggs. <laughs> he's like playing <laughs> egg bruises. Because a lot of them, for some reason, he's got like this, you know, they bounced off of him and didn't break. You can see when he's playing bass. Yeah. They just bounce off, and that's when it really, that's when it leaves a mark. Well, as part of the record's release, you also put out this awesome, this five-track EP, which was all covers. Uh, so I was curious as to what you want to cover in the future. Are there any specific songs you're looking at or you'd love to put your spin on? It's like, it's endless. It's a, I, I love covers, and like some, sometimes I am too eager to, to make this band cover songs. I always, we've learned a lot of different cover songs. And, you know, it's not really what people are there to see. We're not a cover band, you know. We play originals, but I can't resist. Can't resist it. Um, there's a lot. I want to, I, I want to cover London Calling. The whole, oh, nice. the whole album. The whole, I, I wish I could just cover the whole album. And then there's a lot of bands that, that have like, opened for us or we opened for them um that i just are so great and we could almost like pretend like they're our own songs you know because not too many people have heard of them like a band called the darlings from new york they the darlings from new york city they got a really that's a mean that's a good band and uh i would just i have dreamed of covering their whole album yeah i know their first album, um, but at some point you got to be like, all right, let's let's stick to the our job, <laughs> which is to play our own songs. And I know that you're from Chicago, and I've been there I think five, six times in my life. I love it there. Are you still based there? Or are you kind of balancing your time between California and Chicago at the moment? That's correct. I I, okay. I live in Oakland, California. The band is in Chicago. I keep kind of going back and forth. I keep spending lots of time in Chicago and missing home in California. And I'm, you know, it's, I'm a, I'm a confused person. <laughs> what do you find is the biggest difference when you're living in California versus Chicago? Is there anything you miss about Chicago when you're there? Oh yeah, I mean, it's different. Chicago's got a thing. Chicago's got a thing going for it that uh, that no other place has. It, to me, it's the best. The American cities, like it's the best one there is. I don't know if that's just because it's my home, but I don't think I'd be saying that if I was from, um, you know, some tiny town in northern Florida or something. Um, but ah. I don't know. I got some pals there. It's it's hard to spend so much time apart from them. 
feels like home. Makes yeah, sense. Chicago's special to me, but Oakland feels like home too, you know? It really does, and it's, uh, that's like a, that's a place, it's alive in a whole different way. Man, if you could just travel North America, you could do it your whole life. This, this continent's so big, and I've gotten to go to so many cities, they're so charming. I've just been walking around Toronto today, and like, man, I wish, I never, I can't believe I never spent any time here. What were you doing when you were just walking around? Like, were you just kind of looking at stuff? I was going just into places? looking at stuff. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. I was in, like, Kensington Market, and going to bookstores and record stores and stuff, not buying anything, being a nuisance, loitering. <laughs> well, something I want to bring up is just how inspirational it is to see just how fearless you are with your music, your sexuality. You've really opened up to fans, and we really appreciate it. I can see that as a fan myself. Uh, even your website, Perplexed fans can go ask you questions, you respond, like it's really endearing and amazing to see. So I was just curious, how often do fans either approach you and actually just open up? Does that happen often with you? It happens a lot. I think I've encouraged it. I think I've encouraged it and I feel too, you know, I feel kind of two ways about it. Sometimes I think, you know, you might as well make yourself as available and open to talking to strangers as possible that's like sort of part of the whole thing you know you're connecting with people you don't know then other times I'm like I need to hang back retain some mystery you know um, so I'm trying to keep a balance and also you know there was sometimes sometimes people get a little a little too insistent I've encountered some people who demand a lot and you know sometimes after a show you can't always give all the social attention to someone that they might um request so be less entitled and we'll keep talking <laughs> that's that's a message to the fans to the <laughs> i'm glad you actually had the message to the fans because i was just going to wrap everything up today by asking if there was anything you wanted to just say to your fans who are going to be viewing our interview is there anything else you'd like to add to that oh Oh, on the spot once again, <laughs> I guess. Just like, just try, just try a little harder, you know. Try again. Some kind of message of consolation. That's what I'm trying to offer here. Um, you know, it's it's hard to be a human being. It's supposed to be hard, and uh, keep going. You can do it. You can be a good one. That's, that's all. That's what I would say. No, that's fantastic. I just want to say thank you so much for your time today. I really, really appreciate it. My pleasure. It's lovely speaking with you. And remember, everyone viewing, you can visit us at amusicblogger.com for exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so, so much more with your favorite artists. We'll see you next time.